Hi, friends. Welcome to another brush video covering Sonia G's newly released, well, it'll release tomorrow. I want to get this up today. Fusion eye set, which we were all anticipating upon the release of her fusion set back in June 2021. Face brushes with a synthetic and natural bristle blend. Probably what I consider to be the creme de la creme in my collection. And I have several favorites. The synthetic natural blend for cream and liquids as well as some powders. I just think an ideal combination. I constantly reach for these brushes when applying my foundation, my concealer, and I might swap in and out favorites here and there. But the Sonia G Fusion series brushes are always in the forefront of my brush holders where is one or two uh, they're all over the place and I think when we all experienced how incredible the fusion set series is that we were highly anticipating Sonia Crate eye brush versions. A huge thank you to Beautylish and Sonia for sending me this set. It is PR, but let me tell you something, I would have bought it anyway, okay? This set is scheduled to go live tomorrow, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific or 1 p.m. Eastern. Sonia doesn't know if she'll be able to release individual brushes in the future, so if you have your eye on this set or if you've been anticipating it, maybe get the set now. At the time of filming, I do not have the price, but what I can explain are the details going into creating these brushes. They will be on the expensive side because although the brushes have synthetic fibers in the mix, to mix synthetic fibers and natural bristles is a high level task that's taken on by artisans from Kumano, Japan. They hand make these brushes and the bundle ratio is very specific and challenging to do. So it's not just kind of like you know, a little this, a little that. The intricacies and attention to detail that has to take place in order to create these brushes is immense. So that's why when you see the price, you're like, oh my God, they're so expensive. Well, yes, because they're handcrafted, handmade. The combination is tough to work with just to get the right amount of flow and glide to get when combining synthetic fibers and natural bristles. And I'm sure many of you have encountered this when dealing with cream and liquid makeup products. It is more advantageous to perhaps use a synthetic fiber brush. They're more durable, easier to clean. They have really great pickup on those hard to work with textures. But Sonia's incentive to create the Fusion Eye Set was to overcome the challenges she met when dealing with cream eye products and liquid ones as well. I myself have encountered similar scenarios where I have a bunch of cream eye products, but what I ran into challenge-wise was the pickup and not getting that nice layer of impact on the first application, the brush not being soft enough when blending these textures, and Sonia managed to create an eye set that will tackle all these obstacles in the most flawless and seamless way. And I would highly recommend and as I always do in my Sonia brush videos to read her blog post, her blog entry on her website, sweetmakeuptemptations.com. Sonia outlines every possible scenario, every possible eye product, texture, finish, all possibilities are covered and the expectations are perfectly outlined. So if you are wondering, I don't know if this set gonna work for me. Again, Sonia writes out all the different products that she had tested these brushes with. She also makes comparisons with brushes from her own collection and other collections. So again, it's just incredibly comprehensive when trying to decide if this set is right for you. And I myself took the liberty in picking out as many cream and liquid eyes products I have in my collection and presenting as many demos as I could to help you decide as well. And the choice to include synthetic fibers and natural bristles, Sonia wrote, was to get the glide and distribution of product from the synthetic fibers and the blending power from the natural bristles. The set is designed to perform, to offer control, blendability, effortless application, but 
but at the same time be versatile. The bristles themselves, because of that combination of synthetic and natural, flow and flex easily, but they're predictable, right? You know where the product is moving, where it will stay on your eyes. And that security, I think, just heightens one's makeup application experience and also encourages one to use their cream and liquid eye products more often. And Sonia is well aware that her brushes are expensive, so she wanted to make sure that these designs were as versatile as possible. Although the objective was to create eye brushes that handled cream and liquid eye products beautifully well, you could also use them with powders where you don't have to buy a separate uh, all natural bristle brush, pack a separate natural bristle brush. You could just pack all these five brushes and get beautiful eye looks, whether you have cream, liquid, or powder eye products in your makeup bag. Let's start with the detail brush. It is a mix of Psychoho and synthetic fibers. Synthetic offers the glide and Psychoho offers the grip and the blend. This brush was also introduced in the Kiyaki version two set with a shorter Kiyaki wooden handle. Now it is here with the long tapered wood to black gradient handle. An amazing brush as yes, it is a combination of the synthetic and natural bristles, but it is so incredibly soft, direct, but not overly stiff, has beautiful movement across the skin, great for under eye application here along the lower lash line, as well as packing on a little bit more color on the outer lid if you wanted to use a powder instead of a cream. For the demo specifically, I use the detail brush with the Charlotte Tilbury Luxury Eye Palette in Golden Goddess. I use the detail brush to place the powder eyeshadow under my eyes, which was just seamless and easy to get color across the lash line without it dropping too low and keeping the color tight to the lash line. I also use this brush to apply the Ritual de Fil uh, Eye Soot Pot, which I used once when I was swatching them and because of how they're designed, you need a small brush to get into this component. So I applied the color Amina, which is like an opalescent pink uh, flip shade onto my inner corner. And again, the detail brush is incredibly soft where it can get into the nooks and crannies of your eyes and not feel stabby. And it's still small enough to get into the inner workings of the eye without spreading the color too far out. It maintains that control, again, lower lash line. I would even argue a great task for the detail brush as well. If you want a more direct placement here through the crease, if you are creating more graphic looks with your cream liquid eyeshadows or even powder ones, you can definitely strike some color along the crease. Great for brow bone highlight application here for light detailing. If you want it just a little bit of cleanup there under the brow, small detail work down the bridge of the nose because again, these brushes don't have to be exclusively used for just the eyes. You can definitely expand the possibilities in using these brushes for a few complexion tasks, especially if you're one to use smaller brushes for detailing work here. You're not about having a ton of concealer under the eyes, or maybe you're using a small amount of color corrector. You can use the detail brush to tap that product onto the inner lower part of the under eyes. And again, just be very precise with that application. Although I did not demo this, you can use the brush to smoke out some liner in a much expansive fashion. So I do use my Pat McGrath Permagel Liner in Black Coffee a lot to create that wing. But if you wanted to cover more surface area of your eye, like using Permagel Liner as a base or perhaps a softer pencil, maybe from Wayne Goss or Hindash to serve as that color base for your shadow, you could use the detail brush to spread the pencil, not just on the lash line, but pull it up higher onto the outer portion of your lid, and that will manipulate the pencil product beautifully well. Next up, we have the Builder, designed for more stubborn formulas, firm, great pickup, thinner application. This will give you fuller impact upon the first application. You see that it's shorter bristled, the crimp here is in the ferrule, not overly packed, I think considered to be medium density, and it is moderate strength 
with shimmers. So it's not going to give you that in your face shimmer application. I think it is a moderate pickup for those textures. But just to demonstrate the builder's role, I first started with the Final Surgeon's eye pots. This is in the color Pewtered Pine. And you can see upon initial contact that it's a very light wash of color. It's not going to give you that heavy dose, which I'm fine with because I have the control in layering how much pigmentation I would like on my lid. And I do wiggle the brush back and forth in the pot to get as much color as possible. Then on another demo, I use this to pick up the topper shade from the Charlotte Tilbury Luxury Eye Palette, again in Golden Goddess. And I think this is great because I don't want such a heavy serving of a sparkle shade once I've already applied my base eyeshadow. Just a light sprinkle of that topper color to give the glitz and the reflectivity that I like to achieve sometimes. And the builder picks up the right amount of that texture. I could tap it on my lid. It won't overwhelm the eye. It won't look heavy with product. And again, just to demonstrate the versatility of these brushes, that just because you started out with a cream or liquid product doesn't mean you can't move on to a powder one. I would have a microfiber towel on hand, which I do here. So when going from one product to the other, just make sure you gently wipe the brush to get the excess product off and then go into the next one and you won't run into any mudding blending problems. The builder's role for me shined when I used this with another Ritual de Fil eye soot color Andromeda. This picked up that texture like whoa and it spread evenly across my lid and now I have a resurgence of Ritual de Fil. I know it was always loved as another indie brand for makeup because again the design of the compact I didn't have the right brush for it. Yes I have comparisons to make after I go through each brush. It's just nice to have a brush that you get best of both worlds. You get great pickup from the synthetic fibers and then just flawless blending from the natural bristles. I was able to still use the builder to just lightly blend the edges of Andromeda under my crease. So although I would use the blender for that purpose and we'll get to in a minute, it's nice to know if you just had the builder, you can lightly manipulate the edges of the application enough just to blur them if you didn't have another brush on hand. Another tricky texture I wanted to present was the Natasha Denona Crystal Top Coat Pot. I have this in the color bronze. I wiggle my builder brush back and forth in the pot to ensure I get the most pickup of the product. and lightly tap over what I have here on the eye now is from the Danessa Myricks Color Fix, which I demonstrate with the blender brush, but I adore how the builder just picks up the right amount of product. So the lid looks more dazzly and it doesn't look heavy flaky because I found when applying too much of these high reflective type of top coat textures, it could look uneven and heavy. And I think these formulas best shine when they're lightly applied on the lid. And you could place this on your lid and a corner if it was a lighter shade under the lash line. But the builder is fantastic again for that great pickup tapping across the lid and the product actually stays on the lid. So this great adherence there makes it seamless to apply, especially with a texture like the Natasha Denona Crystal Top Coat Pots, which my goodness, if I didn't see I had them in my drawer, I would have forgotten to include them in this video. Too much makeup, too much makeup. That is the role of the builder, your stubborn formula brush, firm, great pickup, thin on the application, which I think appropriate when working with these dazzly reflective textures. And again, moderate strength with shimmers. So if you want a more aggressive pickup with your shimmer formulas, maybe use an all natural bristle brush instead. Up next, which might be my most favorite brush out of the five is the Worker. It sits between the builder and blender, designed for liquid and more softer formulas like those moussey eyes to mesmerize types. Not the strongest with shimmer application, but still manageable. And you can use the tip of the brush to target the crease, which I find ideal when dealing with these moussier textures. I have the Auric Smoke Reflect on and Entice. I can't tell you how easy it was to apply this product. Initial pickup is great, and I like that it's not a ton at once. It allows control 
it gives me the opportunity to spread the product out evenly. It's not like I'm working with the glob on the initial put down and then I have to like find areas to spread it to. No, I like that it's moderate in the pickup just enough and it gives me time to build the color and intensity to where I like. And the actual tip of the brush moves beautifully well across the crease where it flows. You're not gonna have any skipping and it carries the product beautifully so that you have that nice blend. I don't have an extra shadow here on the edges of Entice. I just relied on the shadow and texture itself to leave behind that blend and the brush just to kind of work the edges softly to have that faded effect. And after I applied Entice with the worker, I then went in with the builder to then apply the topper shadow, which I think is a great combination. If I just had the worker, then I'll just use my finger to apply the topper shadow for sure. But because I had the tool in hand, I just wanted to see the builder in action with that type of texture. Of course, I used the worker to apply the Charlotte Tilbury eyes to mesmerize in Mona Lisa. My goodness, an OG color. I love so much. I use the worker to apply Mona Lisa across the lid through the crease under the lash line. The tip of the brush I think small enough to take color here without it traveling too far. If you want more precise application then of course you can use either the builder or the detail brush but worker is great for your all around one and done one shadow moment brush with the cream. It's okay. I also used it with the Sydney Grace liquid eyeshadow. Remember these? I applied the shade Campfire, which oh my heavens, I forgot how beautiful this shade was. But again, this is just wonderful to spread this type of texture across the lid. And Sonia wrote how the worker is designed to apply these softer, moussier liquid textures and the builder is designed for the more stubborn formulas. So once you kind of navigate your collection, know what is what and then match up the appropriate brush with that makeup product, the results are going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. I also use the worker brush with the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow. Oh my goodness. This was from the Raw Beauty Christie collab and it was in the color Like a Moss. And I decided to use the worker with this type of a texture because if the worker is for softer textures, I consider the Super Shock Shadow to be one where it has like that putty, moussey type of a feel to it and I thought the worker was great in picking up that color beautifully and I layered it here on top of Sydney Grace's campfire fantastic you could use the builder with a super shock shadow formula but I like the blender because then I could use the tip of the brush to whip the color depending on what it is through my crease under the lash line in just one go and just be done. I didn't show the Tom Ford eye pots on here, but just judging from my experience using the Auric Smoke Reflect, you're gonna get the same experience with the Tom Ford because the pot formula is that soft, moussey texture, great pickup with the worker, and the top part is like that hard pressed, glittery reflective formula that the builder would take care of. Next up, we have the blender, a round ferrule brush designed domed for control, soft and flexible, not a full impact brush. So your full impact moments are gonna come from builder, a little bit from worker. If you want more of a moment you experience using a all natural bristle brush, this is going to present that for you, but great with hybrid formulas as well as powders. So going into my demos, fantastic for contour work, which I also demonstrated here, using first the Final Surgeons, again, Pewtered Pine, after I applied the majority of the color on my lid with the Builder, I used the blender to take a little bit through the crease. And I love the size of this brush, especially if you have smaller eyes. It's not overly sized, overly fluffy. I think great, for just getting into the crease and has great glide as well. It doesn't skip on the skin. It just moves smoothly across, which ensures like a great blend, especially when working with these textures. Then with the Charlotte Tilbury Luxury Eye Palette in Golden Goddess again, I use this brush to apply some color through the crease. And this picks up softer powder formulas incredibly well. Nice control also through the crease it didn't run away from me. It just kept the color where I need it to stay. And it's not as fluffy uffy as my natural hair counterpart. So here showing the Blender Pro, you can see that there's a lot more like flare here on the tip 
and the blender from the Fusion set is a little more structured here. There's still round ferrules and more of a dome here. This I find is a little rounder with a little more of a taper from the Blender Pro. Still though, the Fusion Blender, I don't know how, I don't know how I did it. It blended that color beautifully through my crease in a way that allowed me to use less product. I didn't have to like pack it on. It was a right amount of dose to get that nice smoke through the crease and then not come high and close to the brow. I also used the blender brush with the Danessa Myricks Color Fix in Gingerbread. And you don't need a lot of this color fix. That just speaks to the product itself. So I like to place this on the back of my hand. You could also apply this on a palette, picking a little bit, a little bit with the blender and the way it makes this color travel, not only on the outer lip but through my crease, was fantastic. I also took some under the lash line. And now I, you know, I have a brush to use with that, with that color fix. Great for precision, but also incredible for blending at the same time. Like it's, it's right there, it's right there. And I also use this to blend the edges of the Auric Smoke Reflect shade when I applied the majority of the color with my worker brush, then went in with the blender to work the edges of that color. And again, it's just so smooth and how the finished look appeared. And I was incredibly happy with that result because again, sometimes with cream products, they could run away from you. They don't stay where you want them because either the brush is too too firm or it's too soft. You don't have that control and predictability, but with these, there's like a resurgence now for me to use my cream and liquid eye products more often because I got the tools. And that makes sense because Sonia expressed the same sentiment where she didn't use a lot of her cream and liquid eye products because the tools just weren't pulling up for her. And now with the Fusion Eye Set, my goodness, they're, they're at the top of the bag, top of the drawer right now. There are, there are the side table, okay? And finally, we have the jumbo worker that was introduced in the Kiyaki mini version set two. Same brush head size, but now we have the traditional long tapered handle. The original jumbo worker came in the Kiyaki wood with the brushed ferrule. Now we have it in the Fusion Eye set. I raved about how much I love this brush when covering the Kiyaki version two set. And it's a great size, not only for eyes, but also for complexion steps as well. I don't have demos using the Jumbo Worker applying eye products. I mainly have it using a concealer, which you can see in my Kiyaki video, but here I used it to apply the NARS bronzing cream. The reason why I did is because the bronzing cream in Laguna 3 packs a punch on me. So to have a smaller brush in delivering the right amount of dose on the hollows of my cheeks, I think is great. I also use this brush to spread the product and blend it out. I could have gone in with a bigger brush like the classic base or even the jumbo base to kind of finish the blend. This is great for under eye concealing, which I like personally because it's not too big, not too small. It's just right there in terms of moderately sized. If you wanted to apply a little more concealer than the typical one, two, three dots, you can, and this brush will take care of it. Precision work down the bridge of the nose, under the lip, maybe here along the jawline. Finishing any shadow, which sometimes I like to do if the blend got away from me, I can just tap the jumbo worker around the edges of my shadow to finish that off. And also Sonia mentioned that the Jumbo Worker can be great for more precise foundation tasks. So if you wanted a little more coverage on smaller regions of your face and not want to go in with a bigger foundation brush again, you could use the Jumbo Worker like I do sometimes for around my jawline on portions where I need a little more coverage on the hyperpigmentation between the brows is great because sometimes foundation can gather here and look heavy. So bringing it up and close to the brow without disrupting the brow work here on top. So Jumbo Worker is fantastic. Touch-ups, complexion precise work. If you wanted to use this on the eyes, if you've got big eyes, most definitely knock yourself out. Whether it's powder or cream, instead of going flat here on the lid, you can just place the product on the tip of the brush and then dot it on the lid and through the crease if you wanted to go there. You know, it is Halloween season and if you are creating more just 
the looks are spreading out farther than your lash line. Using this brush with cream or liquid products to kind of spread the blend out. Come on, come on. Those are the tasks for all five brushes. Now going back to them individually, but covering a few comparisons here. Let's start off with the detail brush first. I have the original pencil one from Sony G's Fundamental Set, as well as the Pencil Pro. Now you can see the detail brush is longer, has more bristle there. I think it a little more versatile in terms of the tasks you can cover with it. I also have the Spectrum and Katie Jane Hughes collab brush in 13. This is a smaller brush, all synthetic fibers, and you see it's smaller, it's domed here like the detail but what i found is that this brush doesn't have the same fluidity it feels a little more stiff you still can use this along the lash line but when placing color there i feel like i have to use this with a lighter hand or else my skin will tug a little bit but with the detail the fluidity and glide is unmatched i mean listen i am biased 100 percent biased towards natural bristle brushes and be loving Sonia. One, listen, transparency, transparency. But from using both, I'm just giving my observations the Detail Pro with the synthetic fiber and natural bristle mixture lends, I think, a silkier experience on the application. If you have more resilient eyes and the all synthetic blend is fine, then knock yourself out. With the Builder, I have the original Builder 3 from the Fundamental Set. Similar in size and in look, you see the Builder is all natural bristle and the Builder Fusion is a mixture of both. Builder 3, again, hard to pick up, textures tapping on the lid. I also have, let me see here, a couple of Katie Jane as well. This is the number 12. Uh, shorter bristle brush. I also have the number 07. It's a wider brush. These are all synthetic and synthetic is going to have great pickup on the initial touchdown, but the actual blend is not going to have the same movement. So I would use this brush maybe to tap on the product first. And then if you wanted to go in with the builder to finish off the blend, you can. I just like the fact that I could use builder for impact first and blending after and not have to reach for a separate brush. Worker, we have a few comparisons here. Well, where is my, where's my builder? I have Worker 1 from the Fundamental set and also the Worker brush from the Lotus set. And you can see the Worker brush from the Fusion set is a little smaller, just a little bit, but the shape is more or less the same. Versatile with lay down capabilities as well as blending ones. Like I said before, Worker brush, probably my favorite brush out of the entire set for its sheer versatility in laying down that right amount of color on the lid first and then using the same brush to blend that color through the crease beautifully in a way that just looks professional, finished, refined, so much finesse, can't handle it. And with the blender, few comparisons here. We have the Sky Set Classic Crease. We also have the Blender Pro. We also have, let's see here, oh, our beloved mini booster. So I would say from these sizes, you can recognize that the blender has more of a direct shape, whereas the other blender brushes with natural bristles come into more of a fluffed dome shape. But despite that, the blender brush has great movement through the crease. And yes, it's not going to be as smooth or fluffed out like, let's say, the Blender Pro. So here is how the Blender Pro moves. You can see there's a lot more movement through the bristles, whereas the Blender Fusion, there's still movement there. I think pretty freaking reasonable considering it's synthetic and natural blend it's more compact shape i think the bristle count in this brush is perfection because again it has that control when dealing with cream and liquid products as well as powder eyeshadow products but still has that flow and flexibility on the blend that again i think 
natural bristles excel in okay if you're not one to use cream and liquid products at all just stick with your natural hair brushes i think you've experienced how natural hair brushes are immaculate with powder products however for the event when you just kind of dip into the cream or liquid once in a while Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the Jumbo Worker, of course, the Jumbo Concealer. Here we have from the Fusion set that released in 2021 last year. And I picked up the small concealer to compare it with the blender brush because I thought the concealer brush was a bigger version of the blender brush. I thought that was pretty cool. But going back to the Jumbo Worker is a longer bristle brush. The Jumbo Concealer has like an offset slant, whereas the Jumbo Worker is even on both sides in that the taper occurs evenly on both right and left. Jumbo Worker much bigger. They both have a crimped ferrule. And Jumbo Concealer is going to be a little more direct with the Concealer Blend. Whereas the Jumbo Worker, since it is bigger and the bristles are longer, is going to have more movement and cover a larger surface area at once than the Jumbo Concealer. I think they're both great. I mean, I'm fine with either or. I just like the fact that Sonia included a brush that's bigger than its counterpart and not around the same size. I think that allows for more versatility. Also, when you think about the entirety of an eye routine, depending on the user, some people like to apply their eye makeup first and then concealer and foundation afterwards. With the Jumbo Worker, you could use this brush to kind of finish your concealer blend, bring it near the eyeshadow just to finish the edges. And I think that is a part of your eye makeup application where the finished look sometimes depends on how how good you apply that concealer under your eyes as well as finishing any parts of your complexion parts of your eyeshadow here so i think that was the right move i'm happy that there wasn't another brush that was smaller or like a little larger just to have the jumbo worker in here i think is great fantastic and that is it my friends hopefully this video helped again i'm not entirely sure if this will be available in individuals so if you're just eyeing one brush and you want to weigh i totally understand maybe you don't use cream or liquid products predominantly anyway and you could pass on this set for now and you're fine with your current collection if you have abandoned your cream and liquid eye products and you have a ton like I do. Now I'm gonna reach for my Ritual de Fil more often, my Fado Surgeons. I didn't show this, the Charlotte Tilbury, not the same as her eyes to mesmerize. These are called, uh, the name is not even on here. Eye Pops, something pops. It's the pressed lid thing design. Words are leaving me. This is what happens when you, you're filming for so long. Builder is great for this. Builder is great. I love the scattered light hourglass formula. Also, you can use with the builder back and forth. You go pick up enough color and vivid. I love it. And lastly, remember the Marc Jacobs sequins? I haven't used this in forever, but this formula is a little softer than the Charlotte Tilbury eye pot and the hourglass scattered light so that's gonna give a little more but woo that's gonna give a little more builder i think again just picks up the right amount and you can continue spreading the color pretending this is my lid across the lid through the crease so many possibilities and i love how my eye look turned out today it's just a nice reminder how beautiful cream shadows can look i think they offer just a different feel and finish than powders do and as much as i love my powder eyeshadows sometimes i want to create that smoky haze that i feel cream shadows just produce beautifully i don't know why maybe it's because the nature of the cream and how it blends and how the edges appear after that blend or the colors that are in the formula themselves where you don't have to layer shadow you could just rely on one color to place on your lid crease and lower lash line and then to have the scatter kind of topper formula just beautifully lay on the lid for a little more reflectivity or i could have just kept it with the cream shadow yeah man i, I can't explain it i just it's just so beautiful so that is it thank you always for 
sharing in my enthusiasm and just gratefulness for Sonia's designs. I know everyone is not going to love her brushes or might have different experiences. I could only share from my experience and I always make sure that I present as many demos as possible just to give you better context and a better idea of how these brushes can work with a myriad of different formulas. Let me know down below if you're picking up the set, if you already have received that pre-order text. Again, a huge thank you to Sonia and Beautylish for sending me this set i will see you down in the comments fam and until then that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then i will see you on here again with another review tutorial brush extravaganza or monthly phase take care and i will see you again soon